Phil, you just saw Watch Dogs 3. Watch Dogs Legion. Watch Dogs Legion, as they've announced. Mm -hmm. Are the rumors true? The rumors are true. You can play any NPC in the game. Uh, it's kind of crazy, actually. What you're doing is building an army of dead sec hackers, and you can have up to 20 of them. And as you're wandering in the world, if you, you know, zap somebody uh, with your little profiler and see they have perks, they have information about what they're like, um, if you like those people, you can recruit them on your team. It takes some work, but you can what, play as anybody in the game. What kind of work do you have to do to recruit them? So, uh, the way it works is everybody in the game has like an opinion of DeadSec, right? So if they don't like DeadSec, the hacker group that you're part of, they, uh, they take a lot more convincing, basically. You have to work them up to being pro DeadSec, and what you can do uh, is when you use the profiler, you find out information about what their deal is if they have, say, people who are uh, related to them who are in jail or a loan shark after them, something like that, you can then help them out with those problems, raise their opinion of DeadSec, so and like eventually recruit side them. Missions yeah, sort of? basically, like, okay. all the NPCs are super well built out, so they have schedules and jobs and stuff that they're doing out in the world. You can find where they're gonna be based on their schedule, what you find out about them through the database, like intercept them at those places. So is there a database that's just like every citizen in this game? I guess so. Interesting. Um, every, you know, you remember the profiler from the other Watchdog games, mm -hmm. right? Where you just like, you know, look at somebody and just it pulls you, like, up little some bit of dumb info. info. Yeah. yeah, like just weird things like, oh, this, I had an NPC today when I played, he apparently like punched his uncle in the chest to restart his heart one time and like some, you know, yeah. weird tidbits like that. Well, those tidbits are a lot more fleshed out, and a lot of them kind of like include, you know, what's going on in these people's lives. And yeah, if you can help them out with stuff in the world, uh, wherever they are, you can raise their opinion of DeadSec and eventually recruit them. And then it requires you to go on a mission that like, you know, it's an origin mission basically to get that character on your team. Mm -hmm. Then once they uh, agree to be part of DeadSec, you can play as them, you can switch to them, anytime you want to. Interesting, is there, like, it, it kind of begs the question, is there, are there permadeath elements? Like if yes. one of your people die, that's done? Yeah, so they can be killed, they can be captured, they can be wounded, they can be like stuck in the hospital for a while. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, obviously. Like you kind of have to commit to getting a character mm -hmm. killed to get them killed, it sounded like. But yeah, they can, they can be knocked out and that's it. Oh, you are f done now. So then who's the protagonist? Yeah, I'm not really super clear on that. Um, really? All right. Well, here's the thing. So, the protagonist is whatever character you want to build. Mm -hmm. Whatever NPC you recruit, whatever they're like. Uh, I played a couple of story cutscenes, and whoever I was playing at that moment, that character was the main character of the game. And they're all like different. The animations, the story, uh, or the dialogue, the, uh, the accents, the voice acting, all of that is specific to each of the characters. Um, I mean, I don't know what the top end is. They wouldn't yeah. tell me, but there's got to be, you know, templates in there. But I didn't, you know, see any crossover. They showed uh, four videos of the same cutscene running at the same time with four different characters, and they all look different. And different voice acting, and mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know how you get to that, you know, who starts DeadSec in London yeah. um, before you start recruiting all these people, but. Uh, all intents and purposes in the game, it seems like whoever you want to be, whoever you want the main character to be, that's who the main character is. And it does take place in London, so, yes. so that was true as well. London's pretty populated, so that there's... Yeah. I imagine they make, they make this populated, at least to what you'd expect from an open world right. game. Like, there's NPCs walking around, and all these NPCs have backstories you can interact with. It's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, <laughs> it's nuts. They, I feel like they must have built a bunch of new tech that uh, they haven't really told us about mm -hmm. yet, but it's it was really pretty impressive just how much went into all these characters, and yeah, and the, you know they're very diverse. There's a lot of space in London. I was in uh, two different areas. One was like kind of run down. One was a little more uh, posh, I guess. Mm -hmm. And and the characters were different based on those areas, you know. So like uh, the 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 poorer folks had like a better opinion of DeadSec. They were maybe a little bit easier to recruit. Their perks might have been a little different. Uh, you know, all the characters have different traits. You know, mm -hmm. some are better at brawling, some are better at hacking. There are also uh, three character classes for these NPCs that you can assign them, and then they get special perks from that, and they have different abilities based on which uh, class you pick. 
So there's a lot going on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and it is, it is in fact another rumor that's going around that Clint Hawking, who directed Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, Far Cry 2, uh, especially with Far Cry 2, he's known for doing some, pushing a lot of boundaries, uh, and he hasn't made a game since, but the rumor is, is that he's been working on Watch Dogs 3, and that is in fact true, right? Yes, creative directing. Yeah, uh, he gave us a quick presentation, I didn't get to talk to him, but uh, he ran through just all that stuff that I just told you and more. It was, uh, it's, it seems, Pretty intense. Um, I was I was pretty impressed. Uh, you know, I liked Watch Dogs 2 quite a bit, and this seems like it's advancing all those good ideas from that game in, uh, in a number of ways. Yeah, Watch Dogs 2 kind of felt like a it, it was like a lower budget tech focused GTA game, right? Which was fun, but it didn't really have much of an identity. I felt, and it seems like they're, they've really found something interesting to do with three. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot going on there. I guess there are five different stories that they're telling throughout the game. I'm, again, not really super clear on how all that works out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's, it's going real hard in a, in a very specific direction. So during this presentation, they also gave you a release date as well, right? Right, March 6th, 2020. Okay, so that's early next year. Yeah, relatively soon. Cool. So Anyway, for more E3 coverage, make sure to stay tuned to GameSpot. Thank you. Thanks. Uh,